She's an Emmy-nominated TV host, as well as an author, actress, producer, head of her own production company. She's covered 10 Super Bowls and reported for Thursday Night Football on CBS. You've seen her on Inside Edition, Fox News, the Hallmark Channel. Faith is important to her personally as well as professionally. She joins me tonight to talk about her new family picture book and the TV series upon which it is based, The Magic of a Small Town Christmas. Please welcome... Megan Alexander to the show. Megan, great to see you. Now, you have not been shy about your faith. In 2017, you wrote a book called Faith in the Spotlight, uh, thriving in your career while staying true to your beliefs. And in it, you tell the story of how faith played a role in your work early on in your career. And as a result, you decided to publicly disagree with a co-host about Hugh Hefner. How did that decision shape the future of your career? Yeah. Oh, Raymond, thank you for having me. It's a it's a pleasure and a blessing to be here. You know, I was raised in a Christian home, accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior at five years old, went to Christian school all the way up through college. But I always wanted to do something in, in TV and film. I always wanted to be in the entertainment industry. And I just wasn't sure how those two were going to go together, how those two were going to blend. Um, but I just, I, I kept thinking, you know, God will let me know when it's time to speak about my faith. When you look at the Bible, we've got stories of people that never felt prepared or qualified, whether it's Moses, whether it's Daniel, whether it's Esther. But what did they do? They just kept moving forward and uh, looked to the Lord that he would let them know when it was time to, to make that move or to go after something or to achieve something for him. And so I, I wanted to do good work first, build those relationships get to know people. And then, yes, there was a time on set on live television where my co-host was praising Hugh Hefner on his birthday and really exalting him as this incredible man. And I just, I, I thought, this is a moment. I have to speak up because I don't agree. And so I did. And it was rather interesting, wow. Raymond. The whole room burst into applause and agreed with me. And I thought, I think there's more people out there. I think there's an audience that isn't being served, that's religious, that's family friendly, mm -hmm. that's people of values and faith. That was the beginning for me to tap more into that and to just speak my opinion when I could and know that God would take care of the rest. Wow. And you've covered everything from sports to entertainment. Now you're covering something perhaps far more important. Tell me about this series, Small Town Christmas, now in its second season on UP TV. How did you come up with this idea, UP again, uh, of a television series dedicated to looking at how Christmas is celebrated in small towns? Yeah, well, I grew up in a small town, Edmonds, Washington. It's about an hour outside of Seattle, the type of town where you could bump into people, you know, on Main Street. And for the local tree lighting ceremony, you didn't have to get there hours early in terms of parking. It was still pretty small. And so I've always enjoyed traveling during the holidays with my family. I now have three kids. We live in a small town outside of Nashville. It's called Franklin, Tennessee. But Raymond, really during COVID, when we had to stay inside and we weren't totally sure how this whole thing was going to play out, I missed getting the family into the car and driving. I love exploring our beautiful country and all the small mm. towns. You know, small towns and small businesses are the heartbeat of America. And I said to my husband, you know, yeah. I would love to do a travel show someday about all these small towns during the holidays. Their businesses are going to need a boost mm. coming off of COVID. I want to make this happen. So I developed the idea, up, believed in it. Mm. We partnered on this show and we've got our second season this year and we've covered another four small towns each season. We pick four small towns around the country and just um, cover how they celebrate the holidays. Everybody has their unique spin. Everybody does something a little bit different. But Raymond, at the end of the day, there's a common thread in all these small towns. Everything's volunteer driven. People do it for free because they love it. They want to be a part of something bigger than, bigger than themselves and part of the community. And Raymond, the other thing is churches, I find, are still the center wow. of so much activity in these small towns. How did you decide which towns to highlight, which uh, places to travel for the audience, uh, as well as for, you know, the communities you'll become, you cover in the series? Yeah. Well, as you know, America is a vast and amazing country. So I tried to give a little bit of everything. I tried to cover all parts of the country geographically, but logistics played into it, Raymond. I, I would make that first mm. phone call to the mayor usually or the tourism office. And it's really fun for me in the early stages to do my research. But inevitably, I have to say, how soon do you put up your Christmas lights? Could we be talking right <laughs> after Halloween, maybe even before Halloween? And so a lot of it came down to how early they celebrate because we film all mm. through the month 
month of November, and then we quickly turn, edit the episodes, and get them on the air to air Sunday nights wow. in December. So it's a very quick process, but I've been blessed that, you know, first season we covered Branson, Missouri, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, Natchitoches, Louisiana, and Somerville, South Carolina. And this second season, mm. we spread out even more. We cover Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, Ella J, Georgia, North Pole, Alaska, and we end up in Frostburg, wow. Maryland. Yeah. That is awesome. Alaska. And Natchitoches yeah. is such an incredible light display. You know, I know that little town. It's really something. I live in New Orleans now, as you know. Um, yes. Before I go on and talk about the picture book, I'm on a plane this past week, and I was doing some writing, and I said, you know, there's all these movies on. I'm going to put this Reba McIntyre Christmas movie on. So I put it on. It's in the background. I love Reba McIntyre. And I'm watching this. Who pops up in, like, the second scene of this movie? But you. I mean, uh, what, what is this? Yeah, I got to play Reba's publicist in You're Talking About Christmas in Tune, which is a Lifetime movie. We yeah. filmed that last year. And I got to play her publicist. It's a darling love story. She plays a country singer named Georgia. John Schneider plays her ex, and they get back together. And, yeah, I got to play the publicist that bossed Reba McIntyre around a little bit, so that was fun. <laughs> Pretty good. I was like, look at Megan Alexander. Totally unexpected. And I just read the picture book before I left the house, and I'm on the plane, and there you are. And I have to say, you know, I never watch these kind of TV Christmas movies. I just don't have time for them. This one was really well done. It's well acted. The music was great. I mean, I, I have to say I was sort of impressed by it. Uh, so good move there, Megan. Now, you decide to write a picture book, The Magic of a Small Town Christmas, to mirror the, the small towns you visited throughout this series. Why did you want to write this book? What was the intention here? Yeah, you know, Raymond, I'm a mother of three small children, and like so many people in this world, I am constantly looking for family-friendly, positive content. I'm wanting to read books mm. with my kids, watch TV shows and movies with them. So that's really the next chapter for me personally and professionally is I, I want to contribute positively to the media landscape. And I would come home from my travels covering these small towns, and I'd be telling my kids about it. And I thought, you know, I really want to put this into a format that they would understand. And what is that? That's story mm. time, right? I read my kids' stories just as you do, and you have have so many incredible yeah. kids books that I have used as tools to have bigger conversations with my kids. And I want to contribute in that mm -hmm. way too. So it's my way to put this into, you know, on their level where we say, Hey, why are our small towns special? But really it's what's the true meaning of Christmas? Mm -hmm. Yes. There's so many shiny things that catch our eye and I love all of it too. I'm all about Christmas, but at the end of the day, it's Me our too. family and our friends that we're with. It's Jesus birth. It's going into a small church, a glow with candles, on Christmas Eve mm. service. And so that's what I tried to do with this book is it can be a tool for me and other families to ask those questions of, wait, what's it really all about? That's my hope. Well, uh, Megan, I love it. And it, 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 cap it certainly captures that. And you are so right. The most important conversations, I think, not only during the holidays, but throughout the year, are the conversation between a parent and a grandparent and that child that they love. And these picture books, I call them family reads, allow us all to enter into conversation, share our values, share our experiences. That ends up being a story richer and bigger than anyone we could write. So thanks for contributing to that. I, I, I had that feeling as I read the book. And I love that you have the series for those who want to go a little deeper. Now, is, is Heartbeat Falls a composite of the various little towns you visited? Is that what it is? Yes, exactly. The Magic of a Small Town Christmas is about the imaginary town of Heartbeat Falls, which was exactly that, Raymond. I tried to take the traits and characteristics and little things that I've appreciated and enjoyed in these small towns and put it into picture format. Again, in terms of the church, the church is front and center on the cover, Raymond. And I, I pushed mm -hmm. my publisher. I said, we have to have a church on the cover because that is central in so many pe people's lives during the holidays. The local ice skating rink, the local bakery. I actually named the bakery in the story after my real life neighbor down the street, Sherry, who makes sweet things for all of us in the neighborhood. Mr. Richard's tree farm. Wow. Everybody has a tree farm in their memory. Most people do about, you know, as a child mm. going and finding that perfect tree. So yes, it's a composite of all the characteristics that we find in these small towns across the country. And you know, what's really encouraging to me, Raymond, is there's a lot of division in this country right now. There's so much going on in terms of, you know, this versus that, whether it's Alaska, North Pole, Alaska, Natchitoches, Louisiana, 
or Frostburg, Maryland, they all have that common thread of community, fellowship, and the local church being the center of Christmas activity. I find I find it very heartwarming, and I want to spread that message because I think we need to hear it. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, we get lost and we focus so much in the media on the lighting of the Rockefeller Center tree and, the, yeah. you know, the, 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 big, the big parades and the big things that happen in cities. But you're right. They lack a, that community, that caring, that personal touch. What do you hope families and children get from reading the book together? Yeah, I hope they'll be inspired um, to travel, to travel the country and support these small businesses. They could use our help. Um, you know, they certainly support each other. I mean, when I make that first phone call to the town, they're constantly cheering each other on. Oh, you have to call this person over at the ice skating rink. You've got to call this local <laughs> bookstore. They would be great. They're cheerleaders, and I, I think we need to do the same. And and my other hope is that uh, people will read it and, and, and they will be inspired to start traditions of their own. You know, my family, we started doing mm -hmm. something called the Flashlight Candy Cane hunt a couple of years ago. We sprinkle candy canes across the backyard and all the kids come over with their flashlights and go hunting for them. <laughs> but Raymond, it's a tool, again, to say at the end of that hunt, we're having fun and celebrating and eating all of our candy. But hey, where'd the candy right. cane come from? That's a religious you know, symbol of a Connection. shepherd staff. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Back to the nativity. So hopefully parents may read it and say, wait a minute, I see myself in those pages. I see myself as a child and some of the things I did in my community or in my church. And maybe if it's gone away and they've forgotten about it, they could bring it back again. Mm. Well, I love it. I love you've, that you've captured eternal truths through the commonplace, through the things we encounter every Christmas, and it points to something bigger and more magical than uh, some of the advertisements we come across. Megan Alexander, thank you so much for being here. The Magic of a Small Town Christmas. It's a must-read for the holiday season. You can find it online, anywhere books are sold. And don't forget to catch Megan on UP TV, Sunday nights throughout the month of December, 9 p.m. Eastern, for the latest episodes of Small Town Christmas. Uh, you can visit uptv.com to view season one and episodes of this year's season two. And Megan, they're running them between now and Christmas, right? That's right. They're going to rerun them. You can catch it on the app, online, a lot of different ways. I watch it through the Philo app. So thank you, people, for tuning in. Thank you, Megan. Merry Christmas to you and Brian and the kids, and uh, we'll see you soon.